Okay. The police department's okay. total budget is four million three hundred seventy thousand nine hundred eighteen dollars, which is ninety seven thousand five hundred fifty five dollars, or two point two eight percent higher than the two thousand eighteen default budget. Wages make up three million six hundred ninety three thousand three hundred twelve dollars, or eighty four point five percent. Gasoline and diesel makes up $67,148, or 1.54%. Utilities make up $118,140, or 2.7%. And other items not categorized make up $492,318, or 11.26%. There's a, just a breakdown of that there on that next slide. The breakdown of the 2.28% increase, wages account for $66,826 or 1.56%. Items not categorized account for $29,740 or 0.7%. Gasoline and diesel accounts for $10,159 or 0.24%. And utilities um, actually went down by $9,170 or negative 0.21%. And that just gives you the breakdown of the pie chart there. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. So we're going to go to this one by section as well. And always top of the list is administration, I guess, because it begins with A. So <laughs> any questions on, Ms. on Mr. Uh, administration, Mr. Lapple? Um, oh, you have a question on Christy's summary. On her summary. Okay, great. I am just not. I'm going to keep going Again. back to this because yeah. I don't understand it. Every time. Yeah. What's items not categorized? Says items that don't belong in wages, gas and diesel, or utilities. Fall into another category. They just fall outside of those three categories. Somewhere. Yeah. 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 And we'll, we'll discover them as we go through section by section. Yeah. Any other questions on the uh, summary, Mr. LeBranch? No, not the summary. Okay. Any other questions on the summary? Thank you. Questions on administration, Mr. LeBranch. Um, the, the question that we asked the fire chief, and I'm going to ask you this, we're just going to do the same thing. Um, how many people in the police department are not union? You have myself, the deputy, two lieutenants, a, uh, my administrative assistant. We do have a number of part-time employees. Um, I don't know if that's where you want to go. <coughs> no, 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 not, not the part-time. Part part we have some part-time folks that do work with us year-round, mm -hmm. uh, but primarily for the full-time employees, it's myself, the deputy, two lieutenants, and my assistant. Okay. And so, um, and knowing that you're not part of the union, um, did, you, did you get raises this year? You and Our the deputy and these other the administration, that these other people. That yeah, we, we had those across the board raises. Back in July? Well, uh, I'm not sure what month it was, but. but no. It was during the summer mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometime. Uh, before, so before, I think it was April. Okay, so, the, so that, I guess what I'm going with here is that, um, so the wages that we are seeing, that's it, they're not going to be. No, you got to understand when it. They're when not going to be added to. Well, no, um, when you look at administration, and we, we just had this discussion. One of the, one of the misnomers, and, and I've oh, spoken with the chairman of the past about sometimes the way the line item reads in the budget, we're really trying to cl close a gap as to what it says in the line item and to what it actually means. So you'll look at this one. For administration, you get the police chief, the deputy police chief, administrative assistant, but you also have the prosecutor. Now the prosecutor is a sergeant that's in the Hampton Police Association. Mm -hmm. So that kind of throws that off. What I think where you're where you're trying to drive to, mm -hmm. that throws that off a little bit. It does yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very yep. much, Chief. Mr. Moore, I'd like to ask you the same question I asked the fire chief <coughs> in reference to various levels within your department: chief, lieutenants, sergeants, and all that, and compare them to other towns and communities that are local, such as Portsmouth, Exeter, or Seabrook, as examples only. Okay. Just so I could get a better understanding of where we are, and I would like to see that. So I can direct you to where you can find that. Okay, the town did engage in a uh, wage study for can the north. Can you get it for me? Huh? Can you get it for me? Um, it, it's public information, so I think it would be better if you did that research. It's a wage study that's uh, available through the town office. I don't have it. It's, it's something that... It was something that so was. I go to the town office. Uh, uh, or you can go on the website. Oh, I did go on the website. 
Yeah. And so I was able to get Portsmouth, but I couldn't find anything on Hampton at all. Yeah, I did it with a generic lookup. Yeah, MRI did the study. Okay, let's track. Christy, could you email us the link to that study? Yeah, it's right on the town's website. Thank you. Just email emails the link. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The other location for the union comparison positions, I don't have a wage study, but the New Hampshire Municipal Association does one every few years. The town is a subscriber, so you could request that through the town. Because I don't have, you have to have a password as a member to get into that website to get that. I don't have that password, only the town office has it. Well, I don't have it either. Well, then what I would ask you to do is contact the manager's office. They right. have that. They can provide that to you. Christine? The NHMA, what's the wage study? The, yeah, the NHMA. That is the, the best accurate information I could give you. We don't keep a running, uh, the Chief, Chief's Association has one, but that's a, a wage study that's for the, the association. It's not something that I have permission to hand out. So I could check on it if I could give you that one, but I don't know. I don't, right now, I don't have permission to give that to you. That would be interesting to see that one, Chief. The Chiefs Association? Yeah. I'll inquire as to whether actually we're hosting the New Hampshire Chiefs Association meeting on Tuesday, so I will inquire as to whether that document can be disseminated to people outside our association. Because the Chiefs Association, we pay a fee for them, right? Um, a, mem uh, a membership is paid in my name, yes, by the town. Right. So it is taxpayer money that... that Pays my membership, yes. Right. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if we can get that information. Very interested to see if we can get that information. I'll ask. So I look forward to hearing yep. that. Christy, can you get us the uh, the NHMA uh, document that the chief is referring to? I will do my best. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, uh, I have question. Mr. Deluca? Just to piggyback on that, <laughs> when uh, you know the average officer salary, that just when you look at that, is that just New Hampshire and surrounding communities, or do we go? A, can we go a little bit outside that, like Massachusetts? I don't really um, border community. I don't think that is. You can't. It, when you do that, you're comparing apples to oranges. Right. And, and the first thing I want to be clear to say: you can't pay a police officer in this town enough money. But that said, no, no, and I agree with that. You. Said, I agree. We have to live in the within the limitations that the taxpayers can get. Yeah. We're current, just so we all know, we are currently in, in negotiations with the Hampton Police Association, so I don't want to go too deep into that because okay. those are ongoing negotiations. What I would say, my personal belief as Chief of Hampton and being in my law enforcement career has been 30 years in New Hampshire, that you've got to compare apples to apples. If you took the Hampton Police Department and moved it just over the border, same size community, same type of operation, you'd probably see a 30 to 40 percent increase in wages just that's because cool. that's, that's the difference okay. between Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And so I don't use Massachusetts comparisons. Well, they also have taxes, income taxes. Um, taxes I'm not here to talk about Massachusetts <laughs> taxes. I'm here to talk about wages. Right. Right. So, so I understand, yeah. but they, they, they need higher wages. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, stay on the... Uh, but they don't pay property taxes like we do either. Yeah. Let's, stay on, our local, let's stay on our local budget matters, okay? okay. Uh, administration, Mr. Warburton, I yes. sense that you have a question. I do have a question. And Chief Sawyer, you just made me feel old again when you said you've been a... <laughs> Police officer for 30 years because we. Well, Brian, you are old. <laughs> I yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. He does well. Right, we, we go way back. And Deputy Hobbs, good to see you too. Chief, you, I think you might have the answer. To, I, mean, I know you have the answer. To, on the overtime wages, was that just moved from another account? It looks like a. Yeah, what, uh, what we've been trying to do, and uh, I can't compliment Christy enough for her assistance in this. And yeah. Tim, we've had a lot of conversations about really trying to make this process, particularly in our budget, more understandable and, and consolidate things where we can. Mm -hmm. I just found that there was, over the years, I think, as you're trying to build things and, and explain things, sometimes we may go too far and there's a time to bring things back to a consolidation. So what that reflects is over time uh, in the area of computers. Yeah. A lot of times we have to have somebody come in and deal with a, uh, when the, the computer system fails. It's one of those things, you know, I, I remember operating a cruiser with a, with the technology of a clipboard, but today you can't do that. You have to have the technology up and running, so people have to come in and maintain that or come in on uh, odd hours. And the problem is, is the team of people we have doing that cross different sections of the budget. You have administrative uh, people that are truly administrative people. You have people that are in unions and it crosses too many sections, so I wanted to put that in one area. Okay. So that's what that overtime reflects. Thank you. Any other? Mr. Lapp. Uh, yeah, speaking of computers and what have you, have we thought about hiring someone from outside just to take care of computers? I would suspect uh, we are in a time in, in, in our history where we're, we're going to experience a lot of turnover due to retirements. And I expect that's going to impact our technology section. Right. So when we get to that point, we're certainly going to explore 
if that is a more beneficial uh, way to go to the taxpayer and look at an outside uh, entity to come in and maintain yeah, that. We'd always have to have, Brian, understand you're going to understand, we're going to always have to have people inside that at least have some working knowledge how to reset things when we have those breakdowns yeah. on Christmas Eve, because that's when it's going to happen. But overall, the maintenance and running of the system, we are going to explore um, an outside vendor to Good. handle that. It's, it's an exploration. I'm not committing. I want to be clear. I'm not committing. I'm going to explore. But keep in mind, Brian, that when it comes to the police computers, there are privacy factors right. that have, you know, from a security oh, yeah. point sure. of view. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. unique. It's a unique consideration to the department, I would suggest. Yeah. I'm looking through that. all of the I understand. Yeah. and I see the same things. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, I believe you're going to see that a direction the town is going to explore extensively. Okay. And the police department included. We're just, as the chairman pointed out, we're, we're, we have to be called CGIS compliant because yeah. we have our access to federal and state databases. So. But we are going to explore it. Mr. Morrow. Okay. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but about four months ago, approximately, a police department, and somewhere in the United States, because I don't remember where it was at the time, with all the cyber stuff going on, they shut down the police department's computers, mm -hmm. the bad guys, mm -hmm. wherever they are, on the other side of the world. And they charged them a ransom of of $10,000. So, so they had to pay the $10,000. My concern is... From what Brian just brought up, we get these people. We also need somebody that's somewhat conversant and be able to protect us in the in the cyber world with all this stuff going on. Fully aware of that. So you're aware of that. Do you remember the story I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Okay, w what state was it in? I believe it was Pennsylvania, but don't quote me on it. But that has been a topic amongst the state and uh, international chiefs association. They they have particular classes at each conference on these topics. It's one of those issues where it's, it's ever-evolving. It, it changes on a daily basis because whatever we do to protect ourselves, somebody's going to try to find a way to defeat it. So it's just a constant thing. Of all the places, a police department. Yeah. Just yeah, it's interesting. Thank you know, virtual machines and backups, you can never, ever suffer that problem with. If you're running on virtual machines with adequate backups, it would never occur, period. Uh, and I would highlight that you've got no money in your budget for ransom, right? Not at this point. <laughs> okay. If you want to throw $100,000 in it, Tim, I'll, I'll put it together. Nope, 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 nope. I just wanted to hi highlight a little concern we because we know you're out. running your operations tight. It'll so pay 100000 to get me back. <laughs> oh, a million or more. A million or more. How does this budget? <laughs> Any other questions on administration? Okay, thank you. On to uh, crime control and investigations. Oh, before we do. Yeah. The chairman actually has a couple questions. You always do. Uh, well, usually, really not, point you. usually not in this section, though. Yeah. I know. I generally stay out of it. This section's not your, your uh, this bell one's, This one's easy for you because it's directed to Christy, so don't worry about it. Oh. Uh, Christy, we have, uh, first of all, this uh, 6150, the suffix number on it, computer supplies and expenses. Oh, yeah. When I drill down into the detail page, it's actually titled Computer Support. So there's a discrepancy there, a uh, minor point. Uh, but underneath there has a description for hardware support, maintenance repairs, $15,000. Uh, I want to get some more than that on that, $15,000. That would be the chief, not me. Uh, anyone in the room. Tom Manager's welcome to answer as well. Oh, the deputy chief. <laughs> well, actually, we've 6150 yeah. 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 On page thirty four the detail. Hardware support, maintenance and repairs. Computer support. Yeah. So we've actually gone down six point six five percent in that line. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that, Tim, because I uh, that's yeah. one I deal with with Lieutenant Gadidas on. I know it's the same. Note that my primary concern here is identifying fixed assets. Okay. Um, I don't consider that a particular problem. I just want to have further explanation. I'm sure the good lieutenant will be able to answer that pretty quickly for me. <laughs> okay. And uh, I noted consultants in here, I think. Uh, 3920. Yeah, when I see greater than 1,000%, it's like kind of catching my eye. You know? Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch. Uh, our discussions with the selectmen, they, they raised the same issue with that. That is a significant jump. Uh, one of the issues uh, we're dealing with in law enforcement as a whole is mental health. Uh, 
Uh, we're dealing with a lot of stuff, um, PTSD, our requirements, and our, uh, I, I think our duty to protect our people when they go through a critical incident. And I'll give you an example. So this is really to address PTSD? Well, no, 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 I, I want to be clear. I'm just do that as one thing. It's to deal with the well-being of our officers. It could be mental health. It could be physical health. Okay. Anytime. Uh, so it's chief, health consultations. Part of it, yes. As a consequence of a stressful event on duty. Could be. It could be for any circumstance I deem an officer needs to be evaluated either mentally or physically. I can order that. For duty readiness, basically. Yes, fitness for duty. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. That's so all I need to know. That's what we've seen an increase in, and I feel that's only going to increase more as we become more cognizant and dedicated to dealing with the met, particularly in the area of mental uh, health and well-being. Well, the police have a very stressful job, uh, both mentally, psychologically, <coughs> and physically. And I, I think that uh, you know, being sure that everything's up to snuff in those categories is critically important, so I don't have any objection with the, the function of doing it, nor the dollar amount that you've got here. Uh, it's just the percentage increase that kind of catches it, the eye. I knew that would right. catch you right. Mr. Yeah. Walbert. Well, and, and I saw the Chief's presentation on this, and it's apropos because I'm actually going to a training on this tomorrow mm -hmm. for my company because, you know, there's awareness issues with people, and you guys had enough stressful job with this. I, I thought it was a great discussion you have, and it's important. And I was actually surprised. Yeah, the $1,000 increase is really kind of misleading at $3,000, but I would they almost expect that, Chief, to maybe increase it. You, you hate to say it in that way, but it's an it important <laughs> piece of that. Yeah. It's an important component. I hate to hear it in that way as well. but Well, it's an important well, component. I, I agree. Yep. We're all done with uh, administration. and. Uh, yeah, well, I, I haven't said I was done yet, but if you say I'm done, I guess I am. So well, well, do you have something uh, no, I'm good. more useful I'm good. and helpful? I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, on to the next <laughs> section. <laughs> Well, I think we were doing crime control and investigation. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So any further questions on crime control and investigations? Great. Let's move on to traffic control and patrol, <coughs> which is not easy to say without uh, Let me see here. No. Any questions on traffic control and patrol? Okay, great. Training. Any questions on training? Yeah. You know, Christy, as, as I go through, as I'm looking under uh, traffic control, control, I see new equipment here for uh, you know, $35,000. I assume some of that may very well be falling under the fixed asset. Um, <coughs> I have a feeling that you're going to, you know, leave here tonight, and probably tomorrow, go through this budget and maybe look at what qualifies and does not qualify for fixed fix assets, give a new clean look at the whole thing. Is that a fair assumption of my part? It was not a plan, but <laughs> because of fixed assets we usually look at when they're actually purchased and we declare them a fixed asset while they're purchased, not when we're doing the budget because the budget is a proposal and we don't know who's going to actually but get But eventually this has to get mapped over to the DRA Correct, accounts. When it's paid. No, to the DRA accounts for the 232, or uh, MS 232, right? And under there is the capital outlays. Okay, so that, that's what I'm focused on in, in the nature of my questions. Yeah, I haven't figured assets. out exactly where we're going. But so you know what, I think you and I <laughs> need to sit down and have a separate conversation on this as a general topic. And I, and I can otherwise leave it alone for now. And I'll report back to the committee what the results of that discussion is. Oh, Christy will. Mr. LeBranch. Um, we're moving along here so quickly. I, um, under traffic control and patrol, could I still ask a question? Absolutely. Back into that yes. category? I just want to uh, comment that under um, 8100, training and recruitment, um, okay. it, ammunition purchases, weapons upgrades, and repairs. Um, now, 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 I think you're crossing over lines. Are you in traffic control and, and patrol? Training and recruitment. And then 8100. Very last one. Yeah, training and recruitment. Yeah, yeah but you, I think you're in the wrong category yeah. oh, because 8100 in training and recruitment is reflects tuition costs for specialized schools throughout the year by FBI. Oh. If you want to talk about training 8100, <laughs> that's the ammo. 42102, 8100. Excuse me, 42103, 
No, actually, it's 42104. Right, that's in. That's, <laughs> that's training. That's not traffic control. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I, I don't have to go back. We were. We you were, want to talk about ammo, right? We were. Yeah, yeah we were training. Let's talk about ammo. Okay, that's. <laughs> okay, now we're right. back to training. We're, we're all done train. with. I'm sorry. Uh, traffic patrol and control. Correct. Okay. No one has any any on that. I know what you meant. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> on to training, Mr. LeBranch. Okay. We set. Thank you very much. We set. <laughs> yes. So the ammunition ammunition purchases, weapon upgrades, and repairs. Now, the 60 cases. <laughs> 60 cases of handgun training ammunition. So that's 60 case, cases in addition to the amount that you need for on a daily basis. Correct. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to know. Any other questions on training? Thank you very much. Well, actually, there's one more in the same thing. Three cases of taser ammunition. <laughs> I thought the taser was electric. Oh, that's it's the little wires and things that go with it? It's this. Okay. This okay. is a cartridge that goes into the front. When the electricity hits it, the prongs come out. And, and then each, you have and to each replace officer it. that qualifies every year has to fire a number of co live cartridges to qualify. Okay. Plus whatever we may actually use in our duties. I don't know They're why very I, expensive. I don't know why I was thinking that you can, can use the same little wire. I wish. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, okay, those I cartridges think it's are like a one-time use kind of thing? These are one-time use things. What will happen is, I'm not sure, that. these go the green door. Yeah. The door blows open when the darts come out. All right. Okay. And then it's done. So you can only use them once because the other thing is if they connect and they actually pierce the skin, now you have bodily fluids. So uh, they're one-time use only. Do they get recycled in any way? No. I don't believe no. these are a recycling program. No, okay. they don't. Mm. So we all learned something about yeah, Thank you for that. Yep. Thank you uh, very much. Mm. No, nothing else on training, guys? All, all set? set. Thank okay. You. Uh, Regina? When I said guys, I didn't mean to exclude you. So. Oh, I am. Okay. I'm not offended. No. Um, <laughs> questions on support and training? I, or I support services, a, rather. Sorry. I have a question. Mr. Frank. Thank you. Uh, Chief, on, on the part-time special officer uh, wages and summer coverage, do you feel you're under budget on that? Because based on what your actuals were in 2017, based on your budget, which was down in 2018, and your actual expenditures, uh, through September, it seems that you're under budget on that. Frank, could you tell me what line again you're on? Oh, sure. I'm in uh, support services. Yep. And I'm at uh, 1200. 4205 1200. Okay. 4205 1210. And I'm just saying you're under budget. I mean, your actuals are more than what you're budgeting for. Yeah, right. So do you feel you should? Probably go back and uh, increase those to to at least meet actual. Here's the problem we're up against: is you know, Mr. Warburton shared his concerns about the budget numbers, and we're trying to you know looking beyond just the police department, but looking how can we try to make this fit a little bit more palatable. I would love to see a budget pass. I, I hate when we see defaults. It almost comes across as, a, you know, and I know it's not meant that way, but <coughs> it really hits the employees as a lack of confidence sometimes. And when we look at that one, that's one of our bigger items. That's one of our bigger lines, and that is driven a lot by weather. Uh, right. You know, now, the areas where I can try to do different things and to save money, that's one of the areas I can try to do that. But it looks like, based on the actuals and year to date. Yep. You know, your best efforts haven't realized that. So what I'm trying to say to you is maybe we should bump that to at least be equal to that so you're not caught. On I'm not gonna say note. no to it. It's where else am I gonna have to cut from then? Well, why don't we just say that Well why would you have to cut? That's not why would you have to cut? Chief Chief, why would you have to cut? Chief, Chief. I'm sorry. The, the, the question is whether or not I mean, you, you had overspent that line in 2017, and you're overspending it again, both of those lots. Right. And, it's and an this year. cost. So it suggests that the budget number itself is lower than actual experience would suggest. So why would we not put a number in there that actual experience would be suggest? More actual, correct. Uh, I'll certainly accept it. I was trying to be frugal. I understand that. I, I mean, is, is there any reason we would not do that? No. Okay, and and where and when you when you've done this last year, uh, that has overspended those two line items, 
and you're doing it this year as well. Uh, where's that additional money coming from out of your budget? To off the top of my head, I'd have to say it, it, it accounts. You know, I, I kind of work on a bottom line. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering yeah. what else is what's suffering as a consequence. I'd have to do an assessment of that. Christy, do you have a thought on that? Because you're the one with the numbers. So, well, here's one. Okay. I decided not to go to the IACP this year. Minor number. I have. A, I have Where is IACP? International Association of Chiefs of Police. It's okay. one of those things <coughs> in my contract, my things, duties. We're just cutting back in certain other areas. How much is that trip? Well, that probably comes up to about $5,000 when you do everything up. All right. Which um, I think is important. But little things like that, um, we cut back where we have to to make sure that there's people out on the street mm -hmm. protecting the town, particularly during our busiest seasons. Okay. Um, so uh, specifically where did all that money come from? I can't answer that for it's you right now. It's squeezed in a variety of spaces. Yeah. Right? I would say that's probably, when you looked at it, that's what, what has occurred over the years whenever we mm -hmm. go over in that line. That's where it usually occurs. Are you comfortable with continuing that practice? I don't know if we have much of a choice. We have to work within oh, our, our budget. I mean, we have a choice here of, of changing that number. I'm certainly willing to accept the change in number. Are you comfortable yes. with continuing the practice that we've done this year and last year on this topic? Um, yeah, I mean, I put, okay, that, I put that number in there. Um, thank you. Mr. Uh, LeBranch. Uh, okay. Under the support services going to line line 3310 outside agencies so the um, the actual 45,049 that you spent this year that would be for the um, the offices that were <coughs> here from other towns during the summer correct. Is that that's okay. correct that's correct and they not only brought their own they brought their own equipment their own vehicles in some occasions yes yeah and that worked out very well I I think I, that you've been doing that for two summers now, or is it? Uh, this is actually the third. Third, and I have to. I live at the beach, and I have to tell you that um, that really seems to work really, really well. Um, the the, the uh, and, and I think you mentioned at the selectmen's meeting that the policemen that you've been having come um, are now have been here for several summers. Some of the same people. They've created a lot of relationships down here with with some of the folks that they're working with. Yeah. Um, and it's a good recruitment tool for every you know for them and for us. Uh, you know we have a, a great relationship with the University of New Hampshire where it's our busy time, it's mm -hmm. their slow time. Exactly. And then when their busy time starts up, we, we reciprocate and we go up there and they pay our officers <coughs> that way. Right. So that that's been a good relationship. Uh, we utilize Epping PD a lot because they deal with a lot of crowds at the, the various speedways mm -hmm. and venues they have, right. and we're very picky about who we bring in. Uh, that we know that they kind of work in the same manner we do, dealing with crowds, and unfortunately with the number of you know people that are intoxicated or under the influence of drugs, you have to have a, a certain level of experience and some patience to deal with those issues, yes. so you don't become gasoline on the fire. And we want to make sure the people we bring in. They're there to help solve, make solve problems, not create them for yeah. us. So, okay. and those programs have been successful. Okay. And congratulations, because that program under under your leadership has is really working very, very, very well down Thank the you. Mr. Frank. Yeah, I'd like to go back to that. I think, you know, in all honesty, I think that that should be increased to reflect the true costs, because somewhere along the line on that bottom line number, he's we're stealing from Peter to pay Paul. And I don't think that's appropriate. Well, it appears as though uh, the Peter, the guy we're stealing the money from, has got excess money. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to be stealing from him. So that's that's the that's the dilemma. He's Mr. Chairman, can I offer something else? Just to sure. I just want to finish up on this one point. Leadership. The police chief's bottom line budget is not being overspent. It's being it's being managed. It's being managed. So therefore, it's like a water, it's like a balloon. You squeeze one end, the other end expands, kind of stuff. It's all still being contained in that balloon, Chief. Chief, if you remember when I first became Chief, you and I had some dialogues about you know how budget should be managed and work. And one of the things that you, you did make a good point with me is that where we can, you know, we have a bottom line budget. But I think for me to move forward the budget and, and as I try to expand the knowledge within the department of how we budget. We try to be as accurate as we can as to where we score things when we expend mm -hmm. funds. And in that light, the deputy did remind me, uh, when we did this, we were looking at a, an attrition rate. 
that uh, just if we hired if we hired a dozen, we were going to lose six to eight and have to rehire people. This year, we did experience uh, a, a great recruitment year. We had 12 new officers, and so far, we haven't lost a one of them, which is wow. unheard of in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, we have the potential to add another 15 for the summer of uh, 2019. We didn't anticipate that. Uh, honestly, we, we, we have been looking at things that were in this kind of rut with recruitment nationwide, but we seem to have turned a little bit of a corner here. Mm -hmm. So when I gave that number and budgeted, it was with that in mind that we were going to lose half the people we hired, and that, that cost money. We didn't. We're doing pretty good right now. That's not to say next month we're not going to lose them. Mm -hmm. We could because um, other departments are very uh, always look at us as a source, a uh, recruitment source. But we have 15 more potentially going to the academy in the near future. So the money may be something we want to consider putting back in, um, even though that's the number I presented to the board uh, when we originally did the budget. It's going to be an insignificant increase. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm arguing neither for or against. I'm only pointing out what uh, I well, perceive to be the fact. But I think, you know, my job is to remain neutral and make sure everyone has an understanding on, thinking, on, on the matters being discussed. And I appreciate that. But I'm also thinking of the taxpayers in Hampton, and I'm thinking of uh, their welfare, well-being, and protection. And I think he should put the money back. At least... Well, he flat. can't. We can. I don't think that having the money there has anything to do with the taxpayers' protection. Right. I have well, total in faith short. in Chief Sawyer and Deputy Chief Hobbs that they well, will be let's able just, to... Let's just bring an end to this right now and, and point out that... Uh, you, you're approaching an, an amendment. If you have an amendment, be specific and make it. Okay, then, okay, I'd like to make an amendment to increase that line. What I line? To, to equal at least what they You were talking about two lines Yeah, earlier. those two line items back to at least flat to what their actual, their actual numbers are. And based on this, we're looking at increase in line 1,200 to 12, at least... 1,200 uh, and 1,210 is what you've been discussing. No, I'm just no, we haven't been talking two lines. 1,200 and 1,210, both. Right. Both are under budget. I mean, his actuals have increased over his budget. Right, it's always okay. called so overspending. I, I, I'd like to see that increase to at least 226,248. That's, that's a funding through September 30th. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. So if, I, if we look at that, he's going to exceed that too, but at least it gives us something. Well, let's get clear on that, Chief. Uh, do you anticipate uh, from September 30th to December 31st that either of those two lie items are likely to increase further? Not significantly. Okay. So okay. we can consider that effectively the year-end number? Yes. Okay. So, Frank, your proposal is to uh, increase or to change um, under support services part-time special officer wages to 226 248 and summer coverage full-time offices to 192,663. Is that correct? Is that uh, your motion? Is that your amendment? That's my amendment. Christine's busy with the numbers, so she's going to give us a difference in a moment, I'm but sure. I, I is, there a, is there a second sure on that, that amendment? Is second line item going to be sufficient on the summer coverage? Because you did spend two hundred and twenty-four thousand. Well, summer's is over, so obviously there's no more spending on that. Yeah, I don't believe we're gonna. You won't experience much in that either, other than, other than a full-time officer maybe working at dispatch shift here and there. Do I have a second on Frank's amendment uh, motion to amend? Second. Mr. Moore has seconded Mr. Frank's <coughs> motion. Discussion. Mr. Warburton. I'm not for this motion, and I'll tell you why. If the chief wanted, he's already answered the question. It's in the budget. He presented it. If he wanted it, he would ask us for it. Yeah. My <laughs> question is this, and it's the only question I have on this part of the budget that in parking administration, two major areas I'm interested in. You're looking at part-time police officers. You pay $20 an hour. Hmm. You just said you have your exact words. We've got a great recruitment year, which I'm thrilled, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So Mr. LeBranch didn't go far enough on the accolades and I'm not here to give accolades as far as the wonderful job, but my concern is one of your folks that has come on Hampton Beach is the police chief of Epic. So my question is this, what 
can we tell the taxpayers that these outside agencies, what are, what are Hampton, what are we paying these outside agencies an hour? People like Chief Wallace and others who have come on Hampton Beach. Because the conversation I hear is, why are we having all these people, it doesn't matter whether they're good or not, from other communities. Why not put more effort and add it maybe to t uh, Chief Hobbs obviously has done a good job on this in really emphasizing the recruitment phase of it. Because this number is never going to really be, it, it could be up and down one year. I think the biggest concern I have, um, much like we talked about when I ran state parks, we had eight state police Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and your comment last year was they don't have the money. Well, to former uh, state rep Phil Bean. That was not my comment. Okay, well, whatever it was to come. To former state rep Phil Bean, who will be very missed, why don't we say to the state, you need to provide people on this beach? I, I, I guess, because that's the conversation when I was down there, believe me, they came to me and they said, you better have this. So I'm more concerned about why are we paying, because we're not paying $20 an hour for these outside agencies. And, and I would ask you, Chief, and I don't need the answer tonight, but I think the public would be very surprised or enlightened mm -hmm. by what we're paying Durham, Epping, and other communities. What is the range that we're paying? Because I think you all would be astonished at the amount of money we're paying. And I'm not faulting you for having done that, but I think we've got to be very clear on why to your motion, which I'm against, because I think we need to be clear on what we're actually asking and what we currently have and how we can't can't fix what we have. That's okay. that's. What. Could I respond? Yeah, go ahead. Christy, do you have the uh, delta on that? How much has it been it's increased? Seventy-two thousand six hundred ninety-five. That's not what I asked. That's uh, what I'm asking. Well, he just oh, asked a question. Oh, seventy-two thousand. Six hundred and ninety-five dollars. Call it seventy-three thousand for around. Seventy-three thousand. Oh, and what, I what, you what kind of a percentage increase is that? Seventy-three. Less than what? Could I reach? I would. I would like to address I thought we were the talking issues about my, that Mr. Walker yeah, questions or my questions. No? Did you ask a question, or did you make a statement? I don't remember. It was a little bit of both. Oh, a little bit of both. I was asking in making. So I would Chief, like would you like to respond? I would like to, if okay. that's okay. Please proceed. So to Brian's <laughs> issues, uh, yes, this is the number I presented. But keep in mind, when I pre first presented this number, it was back in July, yeah. which is very early in our season. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was, I believe it was July 10th yeah. when I presented my first budget to the to the manager. <clears throat> and my methodology was that was that the recruitment for the last 10 years has been very difficult. Attrition's been difficult to manage. This year, we've had a, a good year. We haven't lost anybody from the new class, which we normally lose three or four by now. We haven't lost anybody yet, although somebody walked in with a background check yesterday. So yeah. hopefully that's just the one they're looking at. Um, so moving forward, I couldn't have anticipated mm -hmm. that we had a class of potentially 15 at this moment in time. We're usually down to about six to eight. Okay, so we've had a, a pretty good year retaining and recruiting. I couldn't have anticipated that at the time I presented this number. So if that addresses that one part, Brian. The other part, yes, the, uh, the pay that a, an officer coming in uh, from an outside community is going to be far greater than what we pay a part-time officer. Most of the officers that come in are full-time, and they're working at their detail rate, which is far higher than the, the $20 we pay a starting part-timer. So absolutely, Brian, you are correct. That that number is hourly far greater than if it was a hemp, you know, an officer wearing Hampton Green. Do we know that number? I don't know it off the top of my head. We can get an average, I'm sure. That would should be too hard to do. Yeah. And, and the reason I bring this up too, Chief, and, and I appreciate listen, could, your Brian, I don't mean to interrupt you, but could I finish what oh, I have I'm to sorry. say? Go ahead. I thought uh, because I think this may answer where you were going. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay. So the question had been asked previously when we started this program with the outside agencies, why aren't we using the state police? Well, it's very simple. The state police are dealing with the same critical issues we're dealing in law enforcement throughout the country. Staffing. And the workforce has changed, okay? And this is not a criticism of the current workforce. But the folks coming in the door today do not look at it the way I did or even the way the deputy did as a generation behind me. When the phone rang and they offered you extra work, I don't care if it was Christmas Day. You got up from the Christmas table and you went to work. These folks don't operate that way. They want to come in, they do great work, and I want to emphasize that. The work, the work we get from our employees is outstanding, but they look at things different than somebody that's 55, okay? They're not looking for that much extra work. So when you match that against recruitment, which is very difficult, the city of Rochester's down 
15 officers. Manchester's always down. Nashua, and these are the people historically that come from us. The state police has the same problem, and then trying to find people that are willing to come in and take that extra work. So that led us to this program. It wasn't a lack of money on the state police. They have the money. It's having the personnel that are willing to come down and do the work has been the issue. And that's across the state. So if that answers any of the, the questions and the issues you raised, Brian. Okay. Uh, I think it. <coughs> no, I'm not also. I, I would say this, Brian. I, I think I told I had this interaction. Did with you want to follow Mr. up on this topic? topic? I and want to follow up partly. And he asked the same right. question. Right. Regina, if, do you think? <laughs> I'm sorry, but this support <laughs> services, I look at the monthly financials every time I get them from the financial director. And I have a problem with increasing these line items because I have a problem with how it's left up to the town of Hampton to spend $780,000 a year, when most of that, if you look at the monthly financials, is spent July, August, and September. So that tells me it's all spent down on Hampton Beach, which isn't even our property. So mm -hmm. I am not for putting any money more than what has been recommended by our chief and our manager. I, 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 I concur continue. with Selectman Barnes, and, and, and we'll probably further the dis discussion another time, but you and I both know perception. Perception is a big issue in, in this town and other towns. Mm -hmm. Do you, when you talk about offices from other community, we're not talking about offices. We're talking about a police chief mm -hmm. that is probably making $90 an hour, and I want those figures, sitting on Hampton Beach that happened to grow up in Hampton, and I'm not faulting them, but there seems to be something, it, it's just the perception is not right. It's like, we're not hiring, so we gotta make it clear to the public, we're not taking offices. In some cases, we're taking chiefs. I, I've never, that was, I've never heard of such a thing. So when we talk about having coverage, to Regina's point, to me, that's all the more reason that we bang the table and sit down with the state and say, listen, this is your beach. Listen, I dealt with it when I ran that beach. And I don't see, I don't, what's the worst thing going to do? Say no? Because I, I think at some point, I think, you're talking, but I think you're talking to the wrong guy, though. Yeah. No, 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 I understand it. But we're talking about your budget, and it's hard to, for me, listen, I'm a proponent, uh, and to your point about, um, you know, the employees, I don't know, you made a comment about employees feel bad or something. Let me tell you about when the budget doesn't pass. You and I know that all the union employees are going to get their raises whether the budget passes or not, and all the non-union are going to get their raises. So let's be clear to the public that that's, it doesn't matter whether, in this case, the budget doesn't pass. <coughs> so well, it does, Brian. I think you're well, right. Well, 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 let's get back to the, the well, point I, of discussion yeah, is... Yeah, the amount of money is, we're spending no, on outside... the point of discussion is Frank's motion to... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're talking 1%. Well, okay, okay. Frank, Frank... Frank we, hold on, hold on. Okay. We're talking about Frank's motion to increase Right, the and budget. the reason okay. I'm against so it is because us, of what let I just us, said. Let us remember that's what we're discussing. I understand it. That's right. not a question discussion. time. Right. It's a discussion amongst us about how we're going to vote on Frank's amendment. But the, way, the reason, if you had listened to me, that I'm I not voting for this is because of what I just I said. I understand. All right. Well, well, that, is, that is relevant to the discussion. I, I hum okay. every word. So but let's vote on mean, the motion then. Any other discussion on Frank's motion? Let's move the motion. Any other, oh, we got any other discussion first. on Frank's motion? Seeing none, then I will call for a vote on Frank's motion. Everyone clear on what Frank's motion is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, can we just specify the amount of increase that that should? It's 72000 It's $72,695 or 0.21%. 0.21%. For those two line items, the twelve hundred right. and the twelve yeah. ten. That's a combination. Yeah. I just combined two, them. Two lines. All those in favor of Frank's motion, please raise your hand. Mr. Moore, Mr. Frank. All those opposed. Everybody else except me who's abstaining because I'm Mr. Neutral. <laughs> when did you change? <laughs> well, I became chairman, of course. It's my job to be neutral. Can I buy Mr. Ladd lunch on that comment? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Okay. Now we're back to uh, the support services section. Is there any further questions or discussions on support services? No. Nope. Mr. LeBranch. I just want to point out on line 4310, uh, there's quite a large increase. And that's because <coughs> you are going to buy six new radios every year from now on. 
that's the gameplay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's all I have to say. Oh, that's Thank my you. my lo my once beloved Ooh. radio maintenance line. Isn't it? We cleaned it up. <laughs> like I said, once beloved. Now that it's cleaned up. It's, I heard you. It's like uh, well, nothing to say. Those radios don't cost five thousand dollars a piece, right? So it's not a fixed uh, asset. Three, three thousand two. Yeah. Right. So it's not a fixed yeah. asset. Not Mr. Moore. I didn't get a chance to ask before we took the final vote of the motion, but mm -hmm. I heard Brian state that the Epping police chief might be making in a range of $90 an hour versus if we had a lower patrol person who probably needs the money a lot more than the chief mm -hmm. does. That's in my opinion. Did even that to them. But my, if I can trip you right saying we don't, we can't get those lower people anymore. We have to get anybody we can. Is that true? No, I think you misunderstood part of the conversation. Yeah. The $20 an hour officer is a Hampton special officer, right. new guy. That's going to be about $20 an hour we pay them. Right. But with the shortage of those, when we resort to going to outside agencies, we're also subject to how do they disperse the extra work that's offered in their department. So in, I'll give you an example. In the Hampton Police Department, when we have any extra work, it goes through what we call a seniority list. Okay, so it goes through the full-time officers once, then it goes through a second time, and then it goes to the part-time ranks before we would get to somebody in the administrative level, like myself and the deputy. Not every department operates that way. So mm -hmm. I can't tell you how that's disseminated into Epping, Exeter, or any other agencies. No, that's you, you did it down the beach. Huh? You had, you, this Epping officer was at the beach in Hampton. Correct, but I don't, I don't have the, the ability to call Epping PD and say, I only want your low-paid guys. They have contracts. We have collective bargaining agreements. They have one, too. So whatever the manner in which Epping PD gives out their extra work, if I ask for those officers to come to Hampton, I don't get to hand-pick them. That goes through their process. I don't pick them. It's, yeah. I, don't, I can't let say me, you won't give me the guys. Let me follow up on that. Sure. If, you have, uh, if you called up Epping and said, I need an officer at this fixed rate, and it happened to be that Epping's union contracts afford only the most junior officers at, at that rate, then Epping would say to you, we don't have anyone available at that rate, correct? They would tell me they couldn't fulfill that request right. simply because it's a violation of their CBA. Right. Mm -hmm. Unless there was a junior officer available, then they'd correct. say, yeah, we got one. So you could actually say, here's a ceiling for what we're willing to pay. Can you send anybody? And no, I'd I won't say, do that. Yes or no. I you could do that. No, I won't do that. You won't do that, but we Can't. could do that. Because it would violate their CBA. That's not your concern. That's their concern. No, that is my concern. No, if, uh, if, if you're offering the minimum pay rate. I would say we're getting operational right now. We're, we're, we're way down the path of operation. I think that's where we, where we are right now. Is yeah. We're trying to understand um, when I hear you say that you can't do this, and I'm trying to understand why you can't do this. He told you. No, he didn't. They have a CBA. They have a CBA. And I we can't ask them to violate their CBA. And you're not. You're just saying, I have this money. Do you have anyone available to take it? And that's up to them to decide whether it comports to their CBA or not. Well, we would have to change the understanding of how we bring these people in. <clears throat> we would have to say, OK, instead of following your CBA, it says, you know, <clears throat> it's called in this order, and this is what an officer is paid. Oh, no, no, I'm not suggesting I would have to all. say, OK, we're only willing to pay up to $20 an hour, OK? The problem with that is we wouldn't get anybody. Right, and that's what I wanted you to highlight, right there. Yeah, because we can't. You could put this way. You could put a ceiling on it, but that would also limit your ability to recruit. Right. Put it this way. Part of the reason is we have to do this. Is I can't get the support from the state police that I got in the past. Although it got better last year, so hopefully that'll reduce the need. But additionally, if I'm offering twenty dollars an hour, and I don't put any shifts out to an outside agency that aren't offered in-house first, that means they've already gone through the Hampton officers. That means nobody took it mm -hmm. for $20 an hour. It's going to be based on their overtime rate or their detail rate, and I wouldn't expect an, uh, an officer from another agency to do any less. Okay, so we're all clear on that point, right? Yes. The only person that they're going to send for 20 bucks an hour is the part-time part animal control officer. Which may, may, may or may not be acceptable, depending on which part of the beach he is patrolling. <laughs> I'll pick on the beach. <laughs> All right. All right, so that? any further uh, well, we've wisdom or questions on uh, support services?
Thank you. Yes, I have one. Mr. Wa uh, Mr. Lapp. It's not my ask every year. How many horses do we have now? How many what? Horses. horses. The same you answer I give you every year. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But we have a different horse now, right? Yeah, we just re we just swapped one out. We have Rocky now. So we still have two, but they're actually two younger ones, or at least one. Uh, younger one, one younger one, and we're looking to replace the other one pretty soon until he's getting on in age. Yeah. So we're, we're all done with support yeah. services, right, uh, Mr. Morrow? Yeah. Okay. Frank, why do we have a mounted patrol? That's on the beach? Like that. Oh, that's oh. a long story. Yeah. Um, no, I <laughs> just want to know. Just the clarification. It's a good that break. program was started back in 1981 in a response to, um, it was a couple of issues. Back then, it was the crowd control issues, and the horses were very useful in, in helping quell those issues. But today, it's less of the crowd control, but it's more of the PR aspect of it. They're, they're just so we support the beach effort with our hot mounted patrol, right? And how Primarily, much yes. And how much yeah. do we spend on that? Uh, the mounted, I'd have to look that up for you. Hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of, Frank, he's looking it up, and in the meantime, I want to make a comment to you. There's a lot of money in this police budget that supports the beach. The other thing I would like to make a point, Frank, is that was voted on by the voters as a warrant article, so even if I wanted to cut it, I can't. I'm just, just curious, just curious. Yeah. Voters voted it. Well, they voted it for one year. They didn't vote it for all eternity. Uh, I think that, I believe, my belief is... I mean, the warrant is article says for all eternity? I believe that I don't have the ability to cut that mounted patrol from the budget. Can we get back to the meeting? We are in the meeting. Are you talking about 1981 horse? Yeah. The, the, the number out, you're asking for? <laughs> All I was trying to point out is we accept certain items for the beach, yet when we make recommendations to modify, you know, some protection, you know, it's a, it's a he said, she said. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. All right. So, do we, we want the number? <laughs> if you want to give it to me, I'm happy to take it. 33761? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Haven't we, yeah. got, have we got private grants in the past for funding that? Uh, not grants. We, we have a support yes. group, uh, the Friends of the Monitor Patrol. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are they, a 50, I think it's a 503 or whatever. 50163. Yeah. And so they, they raised a lot of money for us. So, the last horse that we purchased. Uh, there were no ton, town funds expended on the travel expenses uh, and the price of the horse were all covered by the Friends of the Monitor. So they're a great group of people uh, trying to keep that program going. Okay, we're all done with uh, support <coughs> services, right, everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, on to special details, which of course is the topic we have yet to touch, right? Any questions or comments on support, uh, special details? <coughs> no? Thank you. Any now on to uh, police station and buildings. Any questions or comments on police station and buildings section? Mr. Walbert. 14 years ago, Chief, I can't believe we moved into the new police station. Have, has the, um, the building maintenance aspect over the years, have been, and included with that the electric and heat and water, have we seen it, is, it from an investment point? It's, Pretty stable, or are we seeing a lot? It has been, but what you're starting to see again, 14 years in a marine environment. Right. Um, we did some of the things, you know, when we built the place, you know, we're trying to cut and save money, and they, they call it value engineering, and I call it going with the cheapest thing you can get. Um, one of the things that occurred is we had a, a situation where the air conditioning was throwing out heat when it should have been thrown out the air conditioning, mm -hmm. and the heat system was throwing out the air conditioning. Was heating. What happened was, up on the top of the building, you see the vents. Right. Okay. We didn't go with marine grade vents. They rusted shut and threw the whole system out of whack. So and we had to spend a lot of dollars to replace that and some of the components of the air circulation system. <coughs> Those are the things you're going to experience. Uh, we've been looking at um, some of the issues that have occurred, like the fences, the gates we have. Those things yeah. over time break down. You have to replace them. We've had a number of the uh, the light poles in the parking lot yeah, have absolutely. come down because of those windstorms we've exhibited. <laughs> so we're getting to a point where I'm looking at the building that in the next couple of years I'm going to have to come in and look for money to recarpet the place because the carpets are showing 14 years worth of wear and tear yeah. in a very busy police department that also hosts a lot of training and does a lot of events uh, out of that facility. Uh, we just replaced, and we used asset forfeiture money to replace the gym equipment because, hey, we want our folks to be physically fit. They use the equipment, but they beat the heck out of it. 
Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but we, we were able to avoid a budgetary. We had money in asset forfeiture, which I'm allowed to use for physical fitness equipment. So we redid the whole gym with that money. So we're starting to come to that area where we're going to have to start looking at stuff, and we may have to come, to, uh, come, to, you know, not this year, but maybe next year, with Thank some you. items that we're going to have to replace. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions? That's it for the uh, police department budget. <laughs> <laughs>